To continue our discussion on blogging, we're going to start with what a company should be posting on their blog. What types of content are best consumed by consumers? Content can take many forms on a blog. Um, in Tutton and Solomon's book, Social Media Marketing, they discuss the importance of understanding the difference in editorial messages and commercial messages both of which are published on corporate blogs. Um, editorial messages are objective and unbiased. The source of the message, um, in our case, the blogger who's posting on behalf of the company, provides information, but they don't have an underlying agenda for the company. So these are posts that really don't have a lot to do with product features, product quality, or sales. Commercial messages, on the other hand, are advertisements. Um, it's very clear that the intent of the blog post is to persuade the reader to change their attitude or behavior. And so if you look at these two posts here, both are on Walmart's blog, uh, Walmart's corporate blog. And so the first post, closing the loop from frosting bus buckets to Easter baskets, is an editorial message. In that post, they talk about how to use old frosting buckets to um, make Easter baskets that they sell in their store for very low cost. So it's a project, a craft that Walmart's doing, um, just informative. Now, the second post um, is a commercial message titled, Hundreds of New Products Land on Walmart.com During Made in the USA Open Call. And so this post talks about all of the new products that are now on their corporate website that are available for purchase. Now, blogs can be used for both and should be used for both types of messages. But it's important for bloggers, um, corporate bloggers, to understand the correct mix of editorial and commercial messages. And while there's no rule of thumb here on how many editorial messages you should have for every commercial message, um, it is kind of a standard practice that corporate blogs have more editorial messages than they do commercial messages. Um, when writing a blog post, whether a editorial message or a commercial message, uh, there's no secret formula that will work or won't work for the content. Um, there's a few tricks of the trade, however. Um, your book goes into some of them. Um, and the first is to use catchy titles. So a great title can really attract the attention of a reader. And um, that title is what's going to show up on a search page. And so it has to be strong enough to break through the clutter. Remember, 3 million blog posts are posted every day, um, and so you really have to work hard to catch that consumer's attention. And so this is a, an example um, of the Home Depot blog, and their catchy title, Rock Solid Garage Floor Coating Creates Party Ready Space. And so they talk about in the article then um, why to use one of their products to create a party area. So that is a very catchy title that would probably grab the consumer's attention in the clutter. Um, a second tip is to really keep your content focused. Um, the best blogs stay on topic. Um, blog posts should be long enough to cover one topic in sufficient detail, but you should really avoid using filler text or combining topics. Um, an example here from the Allstate blog, uh, they have a home maintenance section where all of the posts in this area talk about ways to improve your home or keep your home safer uh, so that you won't have to um, you know, call your insurance company in case of a disaster. So the content is all focused around the same topic. Um, in addition to keeping your content focused and not using filler text, um, you should kind of think about how long each of your posts should be. And again, there's no magic word count number here uh, for how long a blog post should be. But if you think about it, if you remember, we've already talked about uh, today's short attention spans. Um, and really, a person should be able to read your blog post in about three to six minutes. And so that's generally between 800 and 2,000 words. So if your blog post is getting much longer than that 2,000 word limit, it's time to cut it off and think about how you can shorten that message to make it more effective in less words. A third tip when writing comment is to invite comments. Ask for people to comment on your post. Um, one of the best ways to get feedback is through a blog comment. And um, so asking a question or giving the uh, reader a chance to participate in the conversation 
is a great way to get feedback on your products, services, or the content itself. What would you like to see more of? What would you like to see less of? What do you think of this issue? Those are all great questions. Of course, you can make them a bit more specific. All great questions to ask your readers at the end of your post in order to help generate engaging content. Your book covers a few more useful tips in Chapter 7 um, that you should read. Um, that kind of just talk more about how to create engaging content when you're writing for, for a corporate blog. So in addition to posting content on their own blogs, uh, their own and unique content, we're seeing a lot of other bloggers, um, consumers, influencers, if you will, write posts about products, services, and companies. Um, we're starting to see an explosion of consumer-generated content on the internet, especially on blogs. Um, individuals are writing blog posts um, and they're sharing product reviews, they're sharing industry thoughts, and they might even share coupon codes that they've found on the internet. And so there's a lot of conversation happening about companies, not by the company. And so when consumers are talking about brands and companies on their own personal blogs, we kind of break that content down into two different categories. Uh, so we're going to use Blue Apron as our example as we work through this consumer-generated content. And this image that's on your screen now is Blue Apron's corporate blog. So they have a corporate blog page where they're posting information at a pretty, pretty regular basis. And Blue Apron, in case you don't know, they are a meal a subscription meal delivery service. So um, Consumers can go online and they can order a box of food and that box of food will show up at the customer's doorstep with all of the ingredients for a very delicious meal um, for a small price that is probably overpriced, but it's a great service um, that consumers are using today. So we're going to use Blue Apron as our example. And we're going to start by looking at their blog, which is right here. Now, when we start talking about the um, consumer-generated content and we break that down, the first type of content is organic content. Um, organic content is written when a person feels intrinsically motivated to write about it. Um, and it's really just because they love the product, the brand, or the company so much. And so um, people who have their own blogs will often write these, their product reviews. And so they'll talk about, I got my box of Blue Apron. I really love it. Um, you know, here's all the things that came in the box. Here are the meals I prepared. They'll include pictures. And, um, you know, they really just love the product so much they want to tell all their friends about it. Um, the other type of consumer generated content is incentivized content and incentivized content happens when a blogger is encouraged by the company to write. And so usually by encouraged here, we're talking about incentivized by the company to write about a product. So a lot of times um, companies will reach out to influencers. If you remember those nodes we talked about in chapter five, um, influencers are nodes who have a large following on the internet. And so this is an example of an influencer um, who has many, many uh, followers on her website, um, her personal blog. And so she was reached out to by Blue Apron. And you can see in here um, that the post was sponsored by Blue Apron. So in this case, Blue Apron sent her the meals for free and they gave her a coupon code for her first 50 readers to also get a free meal for free. Now, this influencer was compensated um, to write this post. And so even if it was just in the form of free product, <clears throat> The influencer was compensated. So that is the difference between incentivized content and organic content. And right now, um, readers have the same opinion towards both organic and incentivized content. They still feel that they can trust uh, the writer of that blog about the information they're getting about the company because rule of thumb would be if you don't like the product, don't write good things about it. Um, but there is a lot of... Um, distrust for those incentivized content for some larger products where consumers might feel that the author is giving um, a faulty review just because they were getting a product for free. But these are both ways to get content about your company out in the blogosphere without actually having to pr produce the content on your own. 
Um, I've posted a blog post, actually, in Module 4 for you to read that talks about the power of blogs and how they can be used to continue to grow business. Um, the post offers quite a few tips for companies who want to work with bloggers to get their brand published on social publishing platforms. So it really kind of goes into a little bit more detail on how those influencers are used to write content. Um, so you do need to check that article out. Um, and there's also an article on the 10 best corporate blogs. And you can kind of read about what they're doing right. And there's pictures of some examples of things they're doing. And um, so I, I encourage you to take a look at that as well in the module. Um, and then maybe in your discussion board questions, you can, you can answer some of these or think about some of these thoughts. Uh, do you currently follow any blogs? And if so, are they corporate blogs or personal blogs? Um, and then a question for you is, have you ever made a purchase after reading a post on an influencer's social media? And maybe it was a blog or maybe it's a Facebook or another social media platform where you've been encouraged to make a purchase after reading something an influencer has said. All right, so now that we know what type of content to post, we're going to talk about how often you should be blogging, how often you should be posting a blog post on your, your company-owned blog. Um, HubSpot uh, ran a study in 2015, um, so it was pretty recent, and they studied blogs and the number of traffic that their websites received both based on their post quantity. And what they found was that companies who post 16 times a month receive three and a half times more traffic than companies who only post one to four times per month. So what this is telling us is that the more you post, the more traffic you're going to get. They also found that smaller companies should be posting more frequently than larger companies. Um, if you remember, the same held true for social networking sites. Large companies could get away with one to two posts, while smaller companies need three to five posts per day. Well, the same kind of expands here. Small companies should be posting at least 16 times a month, while large companies can get away with fewer than that. Um, Small companies have to publish more content uh, so that they still stay relevant in the minds of consumers. The most common goal, think back to module one, for social media marketing is brand building. And so in order to build their brand, they tend to have to post more content. But that HubSpot study um, is actually published in the module, or, I'm sorry, it's published in the additional readings um, content folder if you would like to read more about um, the study. Um, another kind of conclusion, what this all kind of really boils down to, is that companies need to be publishing content on their blog multiple times a week. Um, a higher number of posts leads to higher levels of traffic, uh, which leads to higher levels of traffic on their website, which hopefully leads to more conversions and sales. So now that you know you need to post um, 16 times a month, uh, when should you publish that? Well, Dan Zarella is a social media expert at HubSpot. Um, so he's done a lot of research on blogging and when bloggers should be publishing. And what he found was that uh, they should be publishing. You should always publish your content first thing in the morning. Uh, remember, we need to work in Eastern time here when we're thinking about social media. Um, and he found that traffic is highest on blogs on Mondays, Fridays and Saturdays early in the morning. So people tend to uh, follow, check the blogs they follow and search on blogs um, early in the morning on Monday, Friday, and Saturday. He also found that posting, publishing your content, um, the day and time matters because it affects how much the post will be seen. Uh, Zarella found that publishing between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. led to the most traffic and the most Facebook shares. So Facebook shares are beneficial for bloggers because um, it's a way to extend the reach of a blog to a larger audience. So if people are reading your blog and sharing it with their friends, that's a good thing. That's a way to get your post out there in front of a larger audience. So as a corporate blog, you should try to publish um, posts on Monday, Fridays, and Saturdays um, early in the morning so that people have time to uh, read them when traffic is highest. 
So to finish up our conversation on blogging, um, Hootsuite University, SCMD 161, has a great video on building a healthy channel with your blog, and it's about three and a half minutes, and it's found under lesson two in that um, lecture. So I encourage you to go watch that as well. Um, it'll talk about uh, just a few more tips and tricks of the trade was ter in terms of blogging and how marketers are using blogs. Um, we didn't talk about in the lecture wikis or podcasts. Uh, you should read those pages in the textbook and know that a lot of the same best practices that are used for blogging are also used for wikis and podcasts. They're just a different type of social publishing platforms. And that wraps up our conversation on chapter seven.